April 23rd, 2000, 2018, or whatever year it is, um, of the plan Cape Elizabeth Planning Board call to order. First order of business is approval of the minutes from the February um, 26, 2018 meeting and the April 3rd, 2018 workshop. Do we want to handle them separately? I move we approve the meetings as written. Do you want to handle them together? What's that? Do you want to handle oh. them together or separately? Yes. Uh, together? And how do I say that? I have to abstain from one and vote for the other. Okay, so we better do them separately then. Okay, minutes from the February 26, 2018 meeting. Move to accept. All right, second. Go ahead. All right. All those in favor? Do I have to abstain from that because I wasn't there as well? Um, Probably. You don't have to. Yeah. It's a ministerial function, mm -hmm. so you can vote to approve them even if you weren't at the meeting. No. I, I read the minutes, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the minutes from the April 3rd, 2018 workshop. Motion. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? All right. I think we got every. I, I didn't notice if Andrew voted or not. First order of business is 69 Beach Bluff Terrace, private access way permit. Peter Ware is requesting a 90-day extension of the approval granted December 19, 2017 for a private access way to, be create, to create access for a lot located at the rear of 69 Beach Bluff Terrace, section 19-7-9, private access ways. I have a motion for the board to consider. Okay, go right ahead. Uh, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted in the Facts presented that the approval granted to Peter Weir for a private access permit to create access for a lot located at the rear of 69 Beach Bluff Terrace at the December 19, 2017 meeting be extended 90 days to July 22, 2018. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. All right. Item number two, I will turn over to Joe. Um, all right, Global Acquisitions for LLC is requesting that the application for site plan review, a resource protection permit, and shoreland zoning review to construct a 180-foot tall telecommunications tower to be located at 19 Wells Road be tabled to the May 15, 2018 meeting of the planning board. Anybody I, want a motion? I have a motion for the board to consider. Yeah. Be it ordered that... Based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Global Acquisitions for LLC for Site Plan Review, a Resource Protection Permit and Shoreland Zoning Review to construct a 180-foot tall telecommunic uh, telecommunications tower to be located at 19 Wells Road, be tabled to the May 15, 2018 meeting of the Planning Board. Second. I second. All in favor? It's unanimous. Next item on the agenda, Cross Hill Boardwalk RP Permit. Cross Hill Boardwalk RP Permit. The Town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting a resource protection permit to construct up to 600 feet of four foot wide boardwalk on existing Greenbelt Trail located northeast of Tiger Lily Lane, section 19-8-3, resource protection permit completeness and public hearing. And uh, do you state your name? And, and My name uh, is Jim Tassi, and I'm a member of the Conservation okay. Committee. And give us an overview of the project. Yep. Um, <clears throat> so what we're looking to do is harden an area that is uh, currently extremely muddy. And what's happening is that people are actually um, avoiding the town-owned um, trail corridor and encroaching on uh, private landowners. Uh, to the detriment of soils and conditions on their property as well. Our goal is to create a boardwalk that will not exceed 2,400 square feet um, that will be supported on what we call a crib style footings. So it'll be a series of uh, four by fours that are, um, yeah, might help. Um, 
that are stacked on the ground. Uh, estimated span of the longest stretch in the RP2 wetland is about 30 feet, and there'll be additional on the ground board walking of a type that we've used elsewhere in Cape Elizabeth. Okay, now we are looking at completeness of the application at this point in time. Is that? I can't see very well. Is that plan showing where the boardwalk? Yep. Is? So the boardwalk would be this. This you can see the green here. This is a corridor that the town owns. The blue trail represents the trail. Where the trail goes into this area, it is extremely muddy, um, and uh, something needs to be done to harden the trail um, to both protect. So it's just the, in that section. That is. Uh, there's a number of bridges that have, um, you know been uh, put in previously in drier areas in that area, but this is the only one that falls within an RP2 wetland. Um, so, yep, that's the only section. Okay. to open this up to the public with any questions on completeness of the application and that is basically do we have the information at least the good foundation of information before us to to then take this on to a decision at a later time so um, would anyone like to speak to this application Seeing no one, I will close the public comment period and open it up to the board for their questions regarding completeness. No questions regarding completeness. We're feeling good about completeness. Go ahead, Joe. Oh, oh you were just pulling your mic down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If we feel we have a complete package here, would someone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Go ahead. Uh, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Town of Cape Elizabeth for a resource protection permit to build up to 600 linear feet of four foot wide boardwalk on the existing trail located northeast of Tiger Lily Lane be deemed complete. Do I have a second? Joe? All right, any, any further, any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. All right. The next order of business would be to um, open this up for public hearing on the project, and it, and the overall project. So does anyone want to comment on this particular project on any aspect of it? Okay. Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing and I'll open it up to the board for their questions or comments regarding uh, the project overall. Boy, we're quiet today. Yeah, I'll, say, I'll, just make, I'll just make a comment that um, this has been thoroughly looked at um, by the town engineer, and um, as we all agree, these type of boardwalks are, are there are quite a few throughout the community. Uh, they do keep people mm -hmm. off and make it less muddy, so um, I do support this just because I've seen them work so well and I know this one will work also. Any other comments? I got a motion. Go right ahead. Motion for approval and findings of fact. The town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting a resource protection permit to build up to 600 linear feet of four foot wide boardwalk on an ex existing trail located northeast of Tiger Lily Lane, which requires review for compliance with section 19-8-3 resource protection regulations. Two, the town engineer recommends that the applicant confirm the need for any state or federal permits. Three, the application substantially complies with section 19-8-3 resource protection regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the town of Cape Elizabeth for a resource protection permit to build up to 600 linear feet of four foot wide boardwalk on an, ex on an existing trail located northeast of Tiger Lily Lane be approved with the following condition. One, that, any, that the applicant obtain any required state or federal permits. 
Do I have a second? I'll second. Victoria? Any further discussion? Um, yeah, it seems we decided not to do a site walk. Oh, yeah. I skipped right over that puppy, didn't I? <laughs> Sorry. I don't feel the need for one. Okay, but, but we should go on the record saying we don't feel the need for one. Yes. I agree with that. Okay. Yes, <laughs> Thank you, Joe. <laughs> all right. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. I have a feeling. Thank you. I have a feeling we're going to slow down now. Next item on the agenda is. Oops. Get my agenda out. Eight Astro Lane Private Road Review. Margaret Berlin is requesting a private road review to create frontage on a lot located in Eight Astro Lane. Section 19-7-9, private road completeness. And we are doing, at this time, we are looking at completeness of the submission to make sure we have the materials, at least a good foundation of materials to move forward. Go right ahead. Hi, my name is Maggie Burlam, and my spouse, Noelle, and I currently live at 48 Spurwink Avenue in Cape Elizabeth with our two-year-old son, Wallace, and our five-year-old, Donna Nora. And we purchased a buildable, non-conforming lot um, in our neighborhood. And we're very excited to build our house there. And we are here tonight um, to apply for a private road extension coming off of the end of a public road at eight, um, at, on, off of Astor Lane um, to um, acquire the, the remaining 80 feet of road frontage that we would need to have 100 feet of road frontage. Currently, we have 20 feet on Astor Lane. And so I'm going to let um, our engineer handle presenting the extension to you tonight. Thank you. Good evening. Um, my name is Steve Bradstreet with Ransom Consulting, uh, representing the uh, applicant uh, for the design of this project. As Maggie had uh, introduced the project, the, the, the lot it currently has approximately 20 feet of frontage on a public way. It needs 100. So what we're doing is extending uh, a private way off of the end of that uh, public road uh, to provide that additional frontage. Um, with that and through discussions with the, uh, the town, what we are doing is the existing uh, area right now is gravel. Um, it is, has been undetermined exactly what the existing gravel uh, Buildup is. Uh, we were uh, unsuccessful in finding uh, town documents when that was in inspected and whether or not it, if it had adequate uh, gravel for that. So what we're doing is we are totally removing that material, replacing it, uh, grading it with a normal crown, uh, typical of a roadway, um, and providing uh, drainage uh, aspects, uh, erosion control measurements, etc in association with that 80 feet of uh, road extension. What I'd like to do is just, because right now you are looking at completeness, I just wanted to give you an understanding of um, what we're looking at. It is the extension of a private uh, road off an accepted public way, <coughs> public road, to a buildable lot that currently is not conforming because it does not have the frontage. Uh, replacement of all the existing roadway infrastructure, the stormway stormwater improvements. Um, also, there will be a, obviously a driveway access to the site with a driveway culvert in it, uh, or under it, and then public water, public sewer, and then underground um, power and communications brought to the site uh, for the project also. There were uh, two items in uh, Maureen's letter to the board in regards to uh, possible items of uh, uh, that were incomplete. The first one is the monumentation. The monumentation that was in question was part of the, or not part of the uh, Cottage Brook uh, subdivision approval. Uh, it was something that uh, the town and the peer review engineer happened to miss in regards to the uh, providing or asking for the monumentation. Uh, Bob Malley uh, caught it this time, uh, and so in discussions with him, there's two monuments that are required on either side of the Astor Lane at the end of the public road. 
that would require um, uh, monumentation, four inch granite uh, monuments. Uh, the applicant uh, is going to provide those and we'll have them located by her surveyor, which is Owen Haskell. And, uh, Also, at the same time, our plans will refer to the uh, surveyor's plan just as part of the reference of the entire package. So in proximity, it's this property pin right here, a monument, and the one directly below it. Those two, there's no monumentation out there. There's not a pin, there's not a granite, there's nothing. Um, that should have been uh, part of the Cottage work subdivision approval. It isn't there. We are putting it in. So those two points there and down here uh, will be added uh, by the applicant. There was also a, a possibility of uh, wetland delineation or a question of whether or not there were wetlands in sight and whether or not this was complete. Um, our applicant uh, walked this site with Dick Sweet, obviously prior to his passing. Uh, and Dick Sweet indicated that no, there were no wetlands on this site. The applicant also then, um, or re more recently I should say, uh, walked the site with uh, Ben McDougall, the code enforcement officer for the town. He also confirmed that uh, there were no wetlands uh, located on site. And those I believe were documented or at least the uh, code enforcement officer's mm -hmm. recollection of what, um, of no wetlands has been documented in the uh, uh, town's files. So what we're doing tonight is just trying to uh, understand uh, or give you the information that you need to deem this project complete so that it can move on uh, from here. Uh, and those two primary aspects were the monumentation, we're gonna provide them. We're gonna show it on the plans, we're gonna note it on the plans. And then the wetland delineation in regards to um, our discussions or the applicant's discussions with the town and the town's code enforcement officer who in years past did work for Dick Sweet. Um, so with those two we feel that those uh, that information provides the information that uh, was in Maureen's letter to the board of possible incompleteness and we feel that that now does make the application complete and that's what we are asking um, for your <coughs> approval tonight to deem it complete uh, prior to going into any uh, public conversation. Thank you. And I'll answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. I'm going to open this up to the public for comment on completeness of the, prod of the submission. And so if you would like to speak on this, please come to the podium, give your name and your address. And uh, the, you have three minutes to uh, to speak, and Maureen will be timing you. So. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Henry Steinberg, 13 Hunts Point Road, and also 4 South Street. Um, I noticed that there was a waiver asked for to do with traffic. If this is approved and the gate is removed, traffic from the 40 or 50 odd houses may or may not use that road, an extension thereof, to come down through South Street. Therefore, I think that a traffic survey is necessary. End of story from that part, point of view. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to speak on completeness? Good evening. My name is Bob Danielson. I'm an attorney in Portland, and I represent Chris and Julie Munns, who live at 5 South Street. 5 South Street is directly across from the proposed project. Um, I also had the comment about the traffic that Mr. Steinberg raised. Um, there is currently a gate that runs across the road, and I'm uncertain as to whether the gate is going to be relocated or removed, because if it was removed, then I assume all the traffic from Master Lane would continue down South Street and onto Stevenson and onto uh, Spurwink, and I don't think those roads were designed 
for uh, pass-through traffic from what is now Astor Lane. Um, there's no driveway to this location shown on the plan. Uh, it's very important because I don't know which side of the gate the driveway is proposed to be on. Is the driveway going to be on the South Street side or the uh, Astor Lane side? Because I assume there's got to be some kind of turnaround if the gate is to remain. Um, the third is my client's property at 5 South Street exists under a private access way permit. When the private access way permit was granted for 5 South Street in 2004, South Street didn't extend all the way to Astor Lane. It only extended to uh, before my client's property. So my client was granted the private access way, which under the zoning ordinance is limited to one lot. So now we're gonna have a private access way limited to one lot on one side of the street and Astor Lane extended on the other side of the street. And I don't quite understand how that jives in the zoning ordinance. Um, and um, uh, I, I guess that's all my comments on the completeness. Okay, thank, thank you. you, thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? So I'm uh, Chris Muntz, I live at 5 South Street, um, and uh, this plan and looking at this plan and not knowing where the gate would be is, uh, and, and having no understanding that I live on an access way, um, and the hammerhead that is uh, depicted on there is very important to my house, not only from a house perspective because of it being an access way, and, you know, what, and the fact that I live on South Street, but then possibly could be exiting uh, my road on Astor. Um, but more importantly, it's around the safety of my child. I have a child who has uh, intractable epilepsy, um, which if you guys don't know about intractable epilepsy, it's med resistant. So at any time, you can have seizures. And uh, we've had emergency vehicles at our house uh, get confused from 911 calls, and it could be a matter of minutes of him going into static, which uh, you know could really cause a lot of uh, brain damage uh, to him. And it could be the difference between getting him to the hospital in time or not, and not having that turnaround or adequate way for the vehicles to uh, facilitate my house uh, would be be something that uh, I really couldn't imagine. Um, passing something like this, not knowing where the, uh, the gate would be or how we would manage uh, emergency vehicles. So, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Seeing no one, I'm going to close the public comment period and open it up to the board for comment or questions. Can I just say, um, <clears throat> sorry, oh, ahead, sorry. Of, ahead of this, um, I just want to disclose that I live on Astor Lane, uh, 32 Astor Lane. On the other end of Astor Lane, I don't actually know the applicants personally. Um, I don't abut the property, so, uh, but I wanted to make that known and I know the board has a process for determining whether I'm included in further uh, uh, processes or not, so. What's the feeling of the board regarding uh, Andrew's continued uh, do you feel you can be objective in evaluating this? Uh, yeah, I mean, I should also say, I, I mean, I actually heard about this through a neighborhood Facebook group we have. So I, I did know that, that this was going to be, well, that, that the house was being proposed to be built there. Um, I, I know, I mean, there's neighbors all around that I know, I'm, but I, I feel like I can be objective, you know, just based on the facts. Um, that's my opinion, but... Go ahead, Victoria. Did you happen to have any conversations with your neighbors? Um, yeah, prior to, I, we have good friends that are, live in the neighborhood, so I did speak with them about it. Prior to becoming a member of the board? Yes, yeah. Having just joined this. Yeah, so. having uh, less than a month, right? <laughs> yeah. What's, what's everybody's feeling? I, I don't see any problem. Yeah, I don't yeah. see a problem. Me either. Yeah. So, 
we, we will welcome you to continue. And, okay, uh, thanks. Figure you, you, you know the rules uh, as far as, okay. All right, any other? I have a question for the applicant. A um, couple comments said that the gate's not shown on the plans and there's a drive, a turnaround, the hammerhead rather not shown. I, I see a gate, I mean, is that not correct or? Where's the slide forward, Maureen? You mean enlarge? I think you want to use the plus sign up in the top left. In my eyes, is that the plus? That yeah. Right there. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Just click on it. There we go. And then you just. What I'll do is I'll go to the second sheet, a little bit more accurate or larger. There we go. So this is at a uh, uh, twice the scale. That shows the uh, the stippled area that is the uh, existing road that is being uh, replaced, uh, regraded, and then as you can see, ditched. Uh, it also shows uh, uh, a note where a gate would be placed based on conversations with the town and with the fire chief. Um, that is not the not preferred at all to have a gate in there at all. And so that would be because we couldn't change our plans before we came to the board meeting tonight. That is being removed. So there will be no gate on that uh, location at all. So the gate is being removed. <laughs> All right, and then the other, is there a hammerhead there? Is that what that, what's that paved area underneath? The so paved area paved. is the uh, Munns driveway. Uh, off on, um, Astor Lane, you can see the, uh, the public turnaround there. And in discussions with the fire chief, that was totally acceptable with the public uh, turn around on the right hand side of the uh, plan, um, shown right here. So that turnaround does not exist today? This one does. This is a, uh, was part of the Cottage Brook uh, project. Okay. It was so is a is paved what about turnaround. The, what about the turnaround that is currently on the other side of the gate? There's an that? existing one right here that I believe was part of the uh, Munz's approval for the extension of South Street. This was put in. We're not touching that. We're, all of our access and all of our road improvements uh, are stop at the edge of the gravel. Change. 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 Henry, Sorry. you know the rules. Yes, you know the rules. So. Was not well, I'm sorry. There, are, there will be more time for comment on this. This is not ending tonight by any means. So you will have an opportunity to comment on new information that may come to light either tonight. Henry. Sorry? Not yet. Okay, does that answer your questions? Now, you're giving us new information here. You, the uh, police chief and fire chief are indicating that they would prefer not to have a gate at the end of I'm, I'm South speaking, Street. I'm speaking only for the fire chief right Only now. for the fire chief? Correct, okay. fire and rescue. All right, so that, okay. Go ahead, Victoria. You look well, like actually, you want to say something. Those two had their hands up first. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, if, you could, if you could clarify, the applicant is saying, as far as the applicant's concerned, they're happy to go along with the idea of no gate. So the gate, unless there's another reason to have it, is, is it not going to be there? Is that your your position? That is correct. I know it's new mm -hmm. information, but it was we were asked about the gate, and I offered that up because of 
uh, discussions with the fire chief and the town. And was the gate not part of the Cottage Brook subdivision uh, no, plan? No, it was not. That there's, gate was not part of the approved plans for Cottage Brook. There is no gate, no barrier shown there? There is type? one. There's an existing one. It was not part of the approved subdivision plan. Why, why did it, does it exist? Okay, Maureen, go ahead, jump on in. <clears throat> so, it, there was only one gate that was ever approved for Spurwick Woods Cottage Brook, and it's on Chicory Way. That's the only one that the planning board ever approved. Subsequent to the planning board's approval, there were some concerns raised about people getting lost and driving on South Street, and the police chief decided that the chain across the end of South Street would be installed. It is the chain that's there right now is not part of planning board approval. What, what year is that? I don't know. It's been in there for a while. Any other questions? Go ahead. Um, I noted that uh, I think there's supposed to be a maintenance, repair, and plowing uh, note on the plans. I didn't see that. Um, that if it's a private access way or a private road, that basically that the town won't do any of that maintenance for the. If that is a standard note of the towns, then it would be put on the final documents. That's correct. Go ahead. I got a couple questions. So, and it seems to me you've got to turn around on each side of the street. Is that what it is? Both on the same side of the chain. Am I reading that correctly? No. 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 Based, based on what this plan shows, that that would be correct. But that is new information. That that is going not going to be placed. Why do we have two turnarounds in the same? Because. Do you want me to answer that? Okay, so the property that's owned by Mr. Munns was originally owned by Philip Nedwell. Okay. And when he came in, the Munn, it was a vacant lot, and it was at the end of the private road known as South Street. Okay. And so in order to make the lot buildable, okay. you need to have frontage on a town accepted road, or you need to get a private access way permit or a private road approval. Okay. So in 2004, thereabouts, uh, the Nedwells got obtained from the planning board a private access way approval. Okay. And as part of those approvals, you have to have a turnaround for emergency vehicles. There was no chain that was included as part of that approval because at that time, Astor Lane did not exist. Okay. And even when it was cons even even when Hamlin Street was constructed, there were still um, shrubs trees at the end, so there wasn't a physical connection between okay. what we now know as South Street and right. Astor Lane. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, oh. Maureen, if I understand you correctly, then solely in terms of completeness, if they're not proposing to have a chain, then the information we have is what it is. The substantive point of should there be a chain is for the next stage of the proceeding. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, the, the thing with the chain is whenever you create a dead end, you need to find a way for emergency vehicles to turn around. So if a chain right. or some other blockage is proposed, then there needs to be a turnaround that's adequate for the fire truck. If no gate or chain is proposed, then South Street really is acceptable for the fire chief to be able to move his equipment, and he has personally told me that. But in terms of whether there ought to be a barrier there of some type between the public way and the private way of South Street, that's a substantive issue for the approval of, on the merits. That could not, easily be a substantive issue, a, absolutely. Okay. Well, let's turn into another Broad Cove chain. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Victoria. Sorry. I, I actually, yeah, everyone's covered um, my issues under, under completeness. completeness. Yeah, under completeness, yeah. So I'm all set. I do have another question. It appears there's doubt in my mind about the, I'm doing a word search, the um, uh, appropriateness or the size of the rain pond proposed on the land. Yeah, but but, I think but the, they provided one. That means it's complete. Whether we agree with it is a different subject. Whether we ask them to enlarge it or not is okay. the next phase right. of the. Okay. 
Go ahead. Yeah, just one. I think we have to address, <laughs> given the fact that we had received plans that basically had a gate being moved, but now we're sitting here and we're being told that the applicant is requesting no gate. Um, uh, I'll, I'll correct you on that. submission, what I saw was a proposal to move the gate if the town deemed it necessary or town required it. I read that in there somewhere. Oh, Don't ask correct. me where yeah, it is. I guess that's what I yeah, saw too, but I was... That's correct. We are hearing just tonight that the well, fire chief is... Yeah, but the only reason I bring that up is that two members of the public brought up whether or not the, a traffic study that they're requesting a waiver mm -hmm. on. Um, at first, I didn't think that there would need to have a traffic study, and I'm kind of leaning towards not needing a traffic study, but um, given that this is a house, but I just did want to bring that up since mm -hmm. the public did bring that to our attention. So, um, so we can't... Thank you. So do we want to move ahead with our Can I make go comment? Ahead. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. That, the traffic study? Uh, it's possible if that's going to be open, that should definitely be studied. Mm -hmm. um, so it is a shift in the existing traffic pattern. Yeah. Go ahead. And I don't see the need for the traffic study because um, it's, it's, um, it, you're looking for shortcuts, and I think the only person that would see it as a shortcut are the few neighbors that live right there on that part of Astor. I don't see the others going down. down. Excuse me, please. If there is signage that is put up saying this is not a through street, that this is a private street for residents only, there's other ways to take care of that, and then it becomes law enforcement. <laughs> Okay, you can poll the rest of the members if yep. they want a traffic study. Go ahead, Peter. Yeah. I mean, Jonathan does make a good point. I think we have sort of a chicken and egg problem here. If there is to be no barrier, then the possibility of additional traffic may suggest a need for a traffic study. If we determine that there should be a barrier there for substantive reasons, uh, including not having the traffic flow, then there is none. So I would say that we would treat that as, as something ancillary to a determination by the board that there would be no barrier, in which case we might want to defer the final decision until there was a traffic study. If there's some type of barrier or discouragement of through passage, then I think that's probably not required. So you, are you suggesting that um, traffic studies should not, at this time, impact completeness? Yes, that's what I'm okay. suggesting. I, Go ahead. I would agree with that because I'm going to withhold my judgment until I actually do a site walk to see um, if I would think a traffic study would, would be necessary. Because right now, I, I, agree with, I agree with Peter. Go ahead, John. And I just want to point out, I, I, when we got this at the workshop and we looked at it and through the materials, I mean, I understand that the, the language is that the town requested, but I was sort of on, under the assumption, and maybe that was my fault for assuming something, but that this gate, if it was going to be moved, that there was going to be a gate. physically deter people from using South Street as an extension of Astor Lane. So I think we owe it to the residents of uh, South Street to at least operate, and I agree with what Peter and uh, Jim are saying about, I, I don't know if a traffic study is necessary right now, but if all of a sudden we are faced with a complete removal of that chain to deter uh, traffic going through, then I think that that might be something that we have to relook at. Go ahead, Joe. So, Maureen, procedurally, can we, if we grant completeness now with the waiver for the vehicle, uh, for the traffic study, can right. we? Right. The, the way that you've always handled completeness is that has information been submitted is different from is the information adequate. So you still have standards under 
um, your subdivision private access, private road review that talk about traffic circulation. I believe you have the authority to require a traffic study at a later date, even if you deemed it complete now. Is that the question you asked? Yes. Okay. Given that caveat, I, I would be okay with saying it's complete. Okay. Same here. Somebody want to make a motion? Are we done? First, I should say, any other comments? Anyone want to make a motion? I'll do it. Go ahead, Joe. Let me just find this. Motion for the board to consider. Motion for completeness. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Margaret Burlum for review of a private road extension from Astor Lane to create road frontage for the lot located at 8 Astor Lane be deemed complete. Do I have a second? So second. Okay. Jim? Any other discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. All right. Do we have any? We can move on to a couple of things. One is any substantive questions regarding the plan. Go right ahead, Victoria. Um, there was a little bit of a. I'm going to take that back because uh, the engineer, the town engineer, did um, talk about drainage. Yes. And so I would like to um, discuss uh, if you. There are a couple of things that or in the town engineer's letter, mm -hmm. if you don't mind touching on no, the town fine. engineer's letter. Yes, of course. That's OK. Those were my questions, too. Thank you. <laughs> Anything in particular that uh, you'd like to hit on? His first three comments yeah, uh, first three are his ones. general comments yeah. indicating what is in the package, what we're looking for for approvals. They don't have a, a whole lot of substance or request. The only thing that he does say is that he says some of the following comments um, could be considered beyond completeness level. So right. that's where he sort of initiates that process of getting us going forward. Yes. Uh, those are primarily the, um, and then talking about waivers, um, which in discussing with the fire chief and the town, uh, that's why we were asking the waivers for the 22 and the 18. As you go beyond that, um, if you're looking at item number uh, four, mm -hmm. um, he's asking that we should recommend, or he is saying that we should uh, look at a, a waiver request mm -hmm. for that. And that would be part of a, uh, an additional submittal. We have another submittal uh, by the end of this week uh, to get back uh, before you. So those type of things will be asked for. We already had a list of waivers that is in your package. There are some others that are being recommended. Um, such as that one? Such as that one. Thank you. The, the next one is um, the road right of way. Uh, typical, typically, uh, roads are located in the line of the right of way. Um, we have a road, public road, that is built to that standard and private that is not. And we're trying to match. So we cannot physically meet that requirement because one of the roads is off center line and we have to blend to match that. And so I think that is an, uh, an easy explanation that we can uh, discuss with uh, Sebago Technics and the town in regards to the waiver. That was number five. Number six, uh, enclosed drainage system. Um, what we were, had discussed with the town is just this, uh, replacement of the existing gravel, not extending the public road, uh, which would require the uh, curbing, et cetera, and all the other requirements of a public road standard. We are not requiring, we are not requesting that. This is what we're requesting, which has the ditches on it, which has been um, at least vetted through uh, the town staff and would be what would be acceptable. Um, uh, number seven, a little confusing, he stated that since, uh, since a minimal increase in new impervious, there's no increase in new impervious. I've taken the existing road out, put the existing road back in, just of the correct depths and gravel. Um, so I'm a little unclear as to where that uh, increase is. Um, but as he goes in there, he says that he agrees with us uh, that um, because of the impact, the square foot area, um, that no stormwater analysis is necessary. 
based on that, and that's where we came into this project a long time ago, is stormwater requirements are not necessary. And, uh, the calculations for stormwater quantity and quality are not necessary for the minimal impact of this, these road improvements. But what we uh, try to do uh, is to provide some means of, all right, let's, let's offer something up.